Hi, how's it going? So in today's tutorial, um, I'm going to be showing you my process on how I apply resin to um, a couple different projects. I do some stones in the raw, and then I also do some finished, you know, painted pieces as well. So if you're interested in seeing um, my process on how to use resin um, and the outcome, then keep watching. All right. So first things first, you want to get um, your stones clean. Um, I just got a bucket with some soapy water. And then you're just going to scrub it good and get all the dry mud and any kind of grime that's on it. Get all that off. You don't want to paint on top of that. That will just make your paint come right off. So I just rinse it off. And look how beautiful that made that stone. Just giving it a little scrub. And then I just stick them on an old towel. And it brings out the natural colors of the stone. So your paint's definitely going to adhere better to a clean stone than it will a dirty stone. That's just a given. Okay, so we've got some clean stones now, right? I'm just going to let these dry. It's really pretty. I'm excited to paint this round guy. Okay. Okay, so what I have is called Pro Marine Supplies. It's tabletop epoxy. Um, so you've got part A and part B, and you mix them. One is real thick, and one is uh, not as thick. This is more like the consistency of maybe glue and then this is more a consistency of like K-Row syrup or something a little thicker. So you do have to do equal parts of both of those. Now, hold on, there's drumming going on. Let me shut this door. Alright, sorry if you hear drumming. Um, that would be my son. He's up there drumming away. He's learning the drums. Um, okay, so what I found would work really, really well for um, setting your stones on. Um, I got these from Walmart. Flexible cutting mats. You get three in a pack and they are, I don't know, maybe five bucks. I don't know, something like that, I don't remember. But they're not that bad. They're just pretty inexpensive, inexpensive and um, perfectly flat. So that's good. I think I got these also at Walmart, just four. I think I got them for a dollar. I don't know if I'm gonna use these though. The little sponge absorbs a lot of the resin and um, I didn't wanna buy regular brushes because I just thought that was such a waste. So I've got disposable gloves here. And you definitely want to have gloves on when you're doing this. So safety is number one here make that a priority okay and then what you do is okay what I did was um, the little Dixie cups have little ridges little lines on them so they're perfect they are you know you don't have to measure anything you just fill it up to that little first little line or so or however much you want it and then and then fill it up again uh, another cup to that first little line and then pour them together and mix them and that works just as well but for this one I um, I just used a baby medicine measuring cup and I just went up to the um, 15 milliliter mark and I filled it with water and I poured it in here and I marked it with a sharpie and then I filled it up again to the 15 millimeter mark milliliter mark 
and poured it in there and I marked it again. So that is why I have two lines on there because you want it to be very even. You're gonna need a popsicle stick and then you need your stones. Um, these I already painted, but I've resined once and um, I didn't do it right because I did the front first and then I did the back because I was like, oh, I guess I need to do the back and then I did the back and there are these little drip marks. So, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pour over this and see if I can get those to smooth out and they should, that shouldn't be a problem. This stuff is self leavening. Um, while you do want your ultimate surface to be level, you don't have to really worry about brush strokes or finger marks um, because it's just going to fill in, you know, slowly all by itself and just kind of melt a little, you know, and make it all smooth. So you don't have to be too um, worried about that or anything. So here are the two stones that are in a natural state that I'm going to do. And then I'm going to play with these. So I'm going to go ahead and pour part A, which is the thicker one. And they have these little, um, like a plug that goes in the top of the resin bottle. And I guess it's just to prevent leakage and, you know, to so the lid doesn't get all stuffed up. Because I imagine this stuff is hardens pretty easily. I don't know. Okay, now oh, that was kind of difficult to get out. So here's the plug. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it to that very first line. And it's right at that line. And now with, I'm going to plug that up and put it back. I don't want that running down the side. So I'm going to go ahead and put the plug back in it. And push it in. And cap it. Now this marine grade <clears throat> epoxy is um, a resin. This is supposed to not yellow. You know, it's supposed to be really good kind that um, that doesn't yellow in the in time or in the sun and the elements. So that's why I chose this brand. And this one is the second part, and it has a little plug in it also. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour. In the next line, just like that. And then you really, you have to stir this stuff for like five full minutes. So just set you a timer and start your stirring. There are other brands of resin and I'm sure they're perfectly fine. Um, I don't know. I just opted for the safest option here for for non-yellowing but this stuff was not cheap but the two of them together make one gallon so you just want to start stirring I will fast forward through all this because you don't need to see me stir for five minutes I feel like I probably made too much although this looks like such a small amount it really a little goes a long way so Okay, so it's been five minutes and I am now ready to resin. Okay. And so I'm going to set my little popsicle stick down. We don't need that anymore. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply um, find which surface, if you want to paint on this surface or if you want to paint on this surface, find your bottom and start with your bottom. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is here's, I'm going to use this as my bottom. And I'm just gonna get a little bit on my fingers and rub it on there. So instead of using that sponge brush, I'm gonna just use my hands because I have gloves on. And so that makes it okay. Now, if, I, if you don't have gloves, then don't even use this product at all, quite frankly. But if you, um, if you have gloves on and they don't have holes, 
um, then I don't see why you couldn't do it this way instead of wasting a brush. So that's why I was trying it this way. And then I'm going to set that here. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead. And spread more on there. And like I said, you're just gonna you're just gonna spread it on and it kind of just self levels. Okay, so I just got a um, blowtorch, and you just want to kind of um, very quickly go over your stone. I don't know if you can see that, but it just made it nice and glossy. So you can see the bubbles here. So you can see the bubbles. You don't. All right, here we are the next day. Um, I'm just going to show you each item and how it turned out uh, for me, at least, and that was using this. Now, I do have a wire rack that I've tried in the past, and you know, they all seem to have their downfalls when it comes to resin. All the, you know, the the placements, um, the wire rack would leave lines. This mat I found to leave a flat mark. Now maybe I put too much resin and if you know, then please do leave me a comment and let me know um, what you do. I've used tacks and uh, put globes up on tacks. Well, this is how it turned out with the mat. But anyway, I have used uh, tacks um, this stuff is like, it's super hard. Now I let this sit for 24 hours, so this is completely hardened. It looks great. I love it. It looks fantastic. Um, even the underside looks really good on this tray. And then on this smaller stone, um, which, you know, it's not a tiny stone. It has a much smaller little spot. And I actually kind of like the spot because it helps um, give it a flat spot. You know, that's cool to me. <laughs> so um, I like that. I didn't like it on some of these. Like, this is an older um, stone that I made, but it is a pretty flat stone. And its whole bottom is pretty much bad to me. I'm not sure. Maybe I could put another layer on. Same with this one. Maybe I could put another thin layer on and it would help to make that look a little better. But So that's how my outcome was at least with these. Now, um, like I said, I've used back when I used to play with this, I gave up on resin because I just thought, well, you know, these are the little issues that I don't know how to so this was a sphere that had a hole in it so I put q-tips up in it and stood it up on its end you know and um, it held it up but you can see where it dripped down the q-tips and now they're like super duper hard like I don't know how I would cut that off I've even tried with a razor and I think what you would have to do is um, cut it off while it's still semi soft Maybe that would help in, in some of these cases. Here's another sphere that I resined before I painted it. Well, anyway, um, 
see if I can get that. Okay, so I have little pinholes where I held it up with tacks, but you can still see the little teeny tiny pinhole marks, and it's kind of rough. You know, so I don't really know what the correct answer is. I would say resin is great for trays and probably pretty decent on like a medium sized stone. But as far as the larger ones, I guess it's not terrible. And then the flatter stones like these, I would say it's not the best idea. And if you know of a good way to rig it up, then definitely let me know in the comment section below. I'd appreciate it. So, okay, that was my resin tutorial for you. I hope you liked it. And if you did like it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions for me for a future tutorial or something that you would like to see me cover in a tutorial, definitely leave me a comment in the comment section below. And let me know and I'll try to make that for you. And if you're new to my channel, of course, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Until next time, guys, see ya.